Today we are going to learn how to authenticate a REST API Spring Boot 3 REST API using Keyclock. In here I am creating four endpoint to test this one. And first one is uh, hello one, it can access anyone and only admins can access hello 2, only users can access hello 3 and admin and users can access hello 3. Uh, first I am creating a key clock configuration and test it using Postman and after that I am integrating it with Spring Boot 3 application. And first thing is we are going to create this key clock and create this admin role and user role and assign a, assigning admin role to Kevin user and user role to Max user. Uh, let me move into key clock main site and go to this downloads and download this zip file after you download in zip file extract it any folder i already extracted it after go to this bin file bit folder and open new cmd in here after opening this cmd just check your directory you can see there is a this file call that this bat file kc bat you have to run this just run this bat and start dev you can run it now when you are running this type then it is opening in default port it is a 8080 but if you need to specify a port you can specify it as http port equal 8090 now it's going to start yeah, it's already finished. Now you can go to this localhost 8090 port to open your key clock. Localhost 8090. When you are logging first time, you have to create an administration login to login into this. Just create it admin admin. After you create in this one, you can log in using this administration console. It's the direct login page. Just enter that credential you created just now. Now, this is the window for key clock configuration. You can create users, add assign roles, and all stuff you can handle in, in here. First thing is you have to create a Venom. Here in, you can see already there is a master realm, but we are going to create a new realm, create realm, and let's me create demo. Just give name as uh, demo. You can give any name you need, and create it. After creating this realm, make sure to it's selected in here. And next step is you have to create a client. We are, we are using this client to connect with our application. This key clock application is connecting using this client. Let me create a new client. Uh, in this client ID, let me give us a client, demo client. And you, you can next it. And here you can, you have to give this client authentication, authorization, complexity because we are going to use login credentials and access these endpoints and give next and you don't need to configure this now just save it after creating this you can go to this client area and see that you have already created this demo client now next step is go to this demo client and you can go to this role now what we are going to do is we are assign we are creating some roles inside this demo client. Let me create two roles in flow which I told you before. We have already admin and user roles. Let me create those roles. First one is admin. Uh, next one I am going to create is user. It's already done. Next step is we have to create some users. As you can see here, here I am told I told you before we are going to create a Kevin and Max. 
now you have to go to this users tab and create those users i gave kevin first one and next one is max here now you can see there are two users kevin and max next step is we have to give admin access to kevin and user access to max go to this kevin and you can see there is a role mapping go to this tab and uh, cl uh, click this assign role here you can filter it you can have to filter it by clients next you can here you can see that uh, admin which you are created you can see it in here just tick it now admin role is assigned to this kevin user now next step is give user uh, role to max same thing go to role assign it filter by clients and you can next step here you have to find that user you created this one give that to max now you gave the access to uh, role access to kevin and max next step is you have to create password for this kevin and max go to again this one and go this credential tab and create a password i am giving same kevin for kevin as a password it's not need to be a temporary because we are not going to send a mail and reset those passwords just we don't need that for now save it next one is go to max and give password for max also i'm giving max yeah okay now already we what we are do did was we create a realm and create a client and using those client we created two users admin and user and we created two users kevin and max and for kevin we gave the admin access and max we gave the use access now all step we did in that key clock is done now we are moving to postman collection and test this one from there um now what i am going to do is i am creating a new collection for this its name as key clock demo and first endpoint we are going to create is login endpoint login endpoint login endpoint what we are doing in using this login endpoint is we are using this login endpoint to authenticate using this username and password we are authenticate our uh, user and getting that access token and refresh token for now you have to go you can go this panel and here you can see that random setting random settings go to this one and in this endpoints here you can see open id endpoint configuration go to it now you can see there is a here you can find every urls that you, you need to access for this key clock in for token endpoint here you can see there is endpoint for token let copy this one and paste it in here this is a post request and next step is you have to go to body and give some parameters this uh, those parameters are from you are enco encoded parameters parameters are username password grant type client id and client secret these are the main body parameters we have to pass 
let me clean this what we have to do is just pass this client id as a parameter and you can go to this folder and go to variables give this client id and you can give client secret also as a parameter pass it in here and here you can see this url also you can give as a parameter uh, let me copy this first you can give this as a key clock host you can pass it to here and if you can see here you can see this velums this demo mean you are velum name so you can pass this also as a parameter velum just velum this my velum is demo if you don't know what is the velum name is you can go to here here you can see this is the velum name yeah, demo you can check it here from here now we have configured this now you can see how these parameters are passed into this now you have to set up this client id or client secret to get client id you can go to this client area and click your client demo client and here you can get client id paste it to here and next on it client secret to get client secret go to this credentials tab and here client secret you can find from there client secret also done um, next step is go to this login endpoint and give username which we created kevin and password also kevin and grant type is password next try to run this endpoint here you can take a look it now you get access token and refresh token and you can see there's expiry in and expiry those details also in there next step is what we are going to do is we get this body and check what is it within it let's go to this jwtio and paste it into here that's token here you can see all details related to that and here you can see that here here in demo client roles admin this is the role we are created we can see this one if your setup is done correctly you can see this kind of thing client name client id and within roles you can give admin in this you can see that go to users kevin in role mapping we gave the admin same thing let's try to log in as max let's take a look this object here this is a user if this is done correctly then we can move into next step next step is we are going to create a logout endpoint to do this go to postman and create a request this is a logout and this is a post request and you can get the endpoint for this one here you can see end session endpoint this is the endpoint for logout paste it to here and you can change this to key clock cost and demo can change this to velum and go to body form url encoder and main body parameters are client id client secret and refresh token these are the parameters 
you can get the client id from this variable collection variable and client secret also from collection variables and you can give this refresh token to here but you can automate it go to this login endpoint and go to test and let after we get in response we let we save this into collection variable let access token and refresh token this one go to login endpoint and pm got collection variable set we have to set access token it's getting from pm dot response it is a json object and what we need is access token this is the first one and we have to do this for refresh token also refresh sorry refresh token also we have to do save thing let's run and see if it is working yeah go to this key clock yeah you can see this this variables are automatically save into this one next step is go to this logout endpoint and pass that refresh token into here next step is let's try to run this and see if it is working yeah this to see the form content mean yeah we successfully log out from the response um, next step is what we are going to do is we are creating a get access token endpoint get access token endpoint is we can if we need to renew our tokens then we can create uh, call that endpoint and renew our tokens let's start working on that let me create new request it is called as get access token and the url is same as this login url now copy it from login url and for body we have to pass client id client secret run type and refresh token we can get refresh token from the collection parameter run type wait for seconds client id and client secret and for here grant type is refresh token refresh token and next step is we have to pass the authentication header as a bearer token it is the access token we have to pass the access token as a header authentication token uh, it's done for now let's we are login and go to access and let's try this one here you can renew your tokens from here let me do one example again let's log in and let's try to log out this one after log out let's try to get this access token now because now it is already log out then so this not working now let's try it here session not active that's mean it is working uh, these are the main endpoint we are trying now in login log out and get access token in postman collection now let's we can move into spring boot part let's 
let me create a empty spring project go to spring initializer and this is a maven project and i am using java and 3.1 give your names in here give key clock demo i think you need java 17 and you have to spring web use spring web and spring security and lombok and last is auth to resource server these are the main dependencies we are using then generate this project after generating this project please open it from your id i am using IntelliJ for this i did open it in here after opening it what you have to do is first yak go to this source and main folder resources this application properties rename this to application yml file after it uh, let me add some configuration to in here first thing is port i'm using port 8085 and next thing is we have to configure spring security as auth to resource server kwt and JWT issue URL. Issue URL is you can get it from same as let me go to Postman collection. This is the issue URL which you are created variable. Issue URL is slash realms slash demo. Now, easiest step is to go to this and go this. Now, you have first part till this realm name is the issue URL. Next one is JWT set URL. This one is let me copy it from here and show you this one. You have to go this spring security or to resources JW to issue a token mean this URL and protocol so this one is the JW set URL. Um, next step is we have to configure some parameters, config parameters. Those are JWT auth converter resource sorry resource ID and principal attribute uh, resource id mean that your client id you can get it from here your client id is demo client and principal attribute is just give is at preferred username for now i will explain what is this and that is go to this java and create a new package called security in this package you have to create new java class called jwt 
auth convert properties properties and not properties this is the uh, in this file what we are doing is we are getting this configuration data into this file let and the data book this is for get all setters and getters and this is a configuration and this configuration properties are we have to set up three six jwt auth convert but it's done no so yeah you can go to here here in this configuration they get in this jwt or convert parameters that's mean these two parameters we are getting from this one after this we can set up these two private variables those are strings uh, we can copy it. this is a resource id source id and next one is principal attribute principal attribute yeah it's done now we configured our parameters to this one next one is we have to create the that jwt auth converter it is the place which we handle all JWT configuration and get our JWT data. Let's move into that. And let me create new class called JWT auth converter. This class handle all authentication after that refresh token no access token get in this extracted part is done in here mainly what we are going to do is this is a component component and we going to implement this using converter sorry this converter is yeah this one and JWT what to get from some and abstract abstract authentication token and here now let's override these parameters just ignore this for now let's give some parameters private Final parameter it is a JWT gun that cannot JWT gun that cannot it is a new class called gun that cannot gun that cannot next one is our properties file it is called that JWT both convert properties. JWT both convert properties and create a constructor. JWT convert. Pass this. Yeah, that's it for now. Uh, next step is we are going to create that function call get principal claim name let me explain what is that private string principal claim name take argument as jwt Uh, 
this function what we are doing is uh, do you remember that this one is preferred username that kind of thing what we are doing is in here we are in that JWT body we are extracting this principle which I'm naming username mean we are extracting this username from this principle function that is the main thing we are doing let create this string claim name call it JWT claim name sub, uh, sub. can check this from here also let me username you can see username in here yeah here preferred username we try to get this one yes max um something and if properties yeah wait the properties let me change this to property yeah it's okay JWT properties and property attribute we check in if there is that type attribute is there and if it is there claim name we will get as properties wt properties dot principal attribute and next we are return this jwt dot get claim as this claim name claim name from this we are going to retrieve this that's mean here properties right this attribute mean you can see this principal attribute it is called that preferred username we are try to get claim this username it's mean as i show you preferred name is max same thing you can do for this also if you need it and next one is we have to create a class for handle to handle those granted details let's create a collection it's mean extends we have to extend this one granted authority we are going to get and Extract resource that give name as extract resource roles. JWT. In here, what we are going to do is extract roles. That mean here. Wait. In this one, you can see in resource access, you have those our demo client all users we try to extract this user this one is to in by using this function let me start work on it let me create a map it is a string to object map it's called as source Access. Sorry. Resource access and it's getting from JW to get claim. What we are going to resource access. Let me explain what we in this JW dot dot this get claim mean we can get any value in this jw token using this key value that's mean if we give this in here what we are did was we gave the claim as resource access then we can get this object from it and we save it to this map this one is and same 
next one is string object it's for resource resource and we have another collection for string resource you sorry resource let check if this value uh, exist let check resource access if it is null oh, next one is we get in this resources it is a map of a string to object and it's come from we have to resource access dot get JWT properties properties dot get resource ID. We get in resource ID and we have to cast it. And resource. This one is the next condition. And check if it is not. Next one is we are checking for resource URL. So, so resource alls. It is a uh, resources. Uh, check resources and get object as alls uh, and we have to cast it for a collection collection call string cast it for object and check if it is not um, let me check what is the wrong ah here just and if this are uh, not getting we have to set here let me explain it again here you can check if resource access that means resources are there uh, if they are this then we are checking if this resource id that's mean we are checking if this is exist and then we check if this is exist and if this is x we check in that condition in there and that's it and next one is if all are good then we are going to get resources and stream it and draw mapping we have to pass this to new sorry simple grant authentication and all plus log and collection that collection list here yeah. then if that is that object is there then you are returning that role list next step is now we can implement this app the abstract authentication token part uh, let me put this as JWT collection uh, 
Jangan tetap dulu itu Atlas. Kan get. Jadi tak perlu tu kan kenata dot kenata. Ipas jw tu and string. Next one is explorer and it also pass to wt string yeah that is and we have to collect this to set next one is we have to pass new jwt authentication token WT and parties and get principal name JWT. Yeah, that's it for our JWT auth converter part. And anyway, I am giving this code, then you can follow it. I will put GitHub link in description, you can get it from there and next one is we have to do create web security config file uh, this is also configuration and we are going to set web security And we have required Docker slot. And let me create two variables for admin and user parameters here. Public static final admin. And next parameter is for that JWT converter. Dot converter. And now I am creating a function called that security filter chain. It's used for that filtering all endpoints. That that's mean to filter all those we have used that endpoint. Let me create it public security sorry security filter chain security filter chain and needs to be in this one pass http security yeah that's it now i am going to handle this flow that's mean give access for endpoints get and this is a authorized http request and this a auth and we have two parameters yeah let me and first one we have to request match this is http method called get this mean we are getting http method get because i am already uh, using get request all those are get request you filter out get request and part is hello one And we check permit all. This permit all mean we are give access to every body. We are not giving any authorization access for that. Anyone can access that one. Hello one. Yeah, they're in here. 
and second one is only can access admin second third one is only can access user this is the same let me do both of together and auth request match it's also a http get request and pattern is test hello to and only giving access to role as role mean checking role it's need to be a admin and same thing to again and this hello3 it's giving access to users and finally what we have to do is give both access to this admin and user for this same thing request matches http header get pattern check test hello 3 4 and sorry i missed and check has roles any and admin user we check in both and finally we give any request not match to it authenticated yeah that's it let me put this one here and check what is uh, we have to ex add the exception because it is throwing exception and next one is now this filtering part is done let me go through this this filtering give access filtering is done now what we are going to do is we have to run this converter we created because using that converter we get in our user role list without that we cannot get that our user details from url for that we are calling this resource, resource server and auth to user init uh, auth to dot jwt we check in this jwt and running that converter which we created that's it from this one what we are doing is we are calling the our converter which we created in this field lastly we give session management as stateless This one is session creation, session creation policy. It's given as stateless. Session creation policy as stateless. Yeah, that's it. Now our filter also done and also we have to return this one now return http build yeah. our filtering part is done that's overall we are going what i going to do is in here sick in here first one is we are filtering our endpoints 
related dues in these roles and next one is we are filtered in this kw auth converter mean we are calling our converter we created a converter we call in this converter to get the roles and all other details and next one is we give stateless as a session management let me create a demo controller to testing demo controller this test controller Request mapping is test. Test one is hello one. This in return value call. Anyone can access. Yeah, let me check it from number. They can. Here you can see here anyone can access endpoint is hello one and let me create the admin and user endpoints also and one thing you missing you have to add the get map in as a hello one and next one is Hello to endpoint, it can access admin. Next one is hello three, can access user. And hello four, it can access admin and user. Uh, my controller also done. Let me run this code and check if it is working. Yeah, I'm getting an error. Let me check it. Oh, yeah, you. I did one mistake in here in issuer URL. It is a issuer URI, and this one also URI. And another mistake is in is here. I did spelling mistake. It is a realms. Yeah. Let me run it again and check. Yeah, it's running fine. Let me go to Postman and check it. Let me create an endpoint to check our app. It is running in localhost 805. And let me check first endpoint. It is this anyone can access endpoint. Let me check it. We don't use any authorization headers. Let me check it. Yeah, it's working. Anyone can access. And let me check second endpoint which admin can access. Here you can see it is unauthorized because it, we haven't provided any authorization header. Let me add bearer token and let me log in as a admin. Our admin is Kevin. Let me check it. And let's try to get body parameter and check if it is correct. Yeah, it is admin. And let me run this one and check it is. Yeah, admin can access. It's working. Let me check now next endpoint. Third one. Yeah, it is also cannot access. It's mean let me go to our code and see. Here you can see that use only user can access third endpoint. 
yeah it's now what you are going to do is let me log as a max max is our user and check again our role yeah it is user let me check it now for this endpoint yeah it's working user and let's try for fourth one it's can access admin no user here user can access it and let me check it for kevin also let me check it yeah it's work for kevin also and yeah that's it for now i think our whole process is working uh, if you have any question please comment below i will answer for it thank you